Good morning, church. Uh, it's good to be great uh, and wonderful to be back here in Coast Alive, Sunshine Coast. Uh, I've been away in uh, Malaysia for a little while now and uh, ministering there, but uh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to meet all, meet all of you and uh, looking forward to catching up with all of you in person. And uh, uh, this morning, what I'd like to do is to just give a brief introduction of how the service is going to be and what's going to happen so you know what's coming uh, as, as, as the service proceeds. So what, one of the first things we are going to do is that uh, we are going to make an announcement uh, for what's going to happen uh, during the week and uh, the things that are going to happen. And then we are going to have a, the sermon come on and then uh, I'll be sharing a message. And then at the end of it, uh, we're just going to take communion. Uh, those of you who are prepared to take communion, we're just going to pray over and bless the communion. I pray some of you are ready, or maybe most of you are ready. Just share communion with me as we, as we remember the Lord uh, during this time. So that's going to happen. And then, uh, uh, but prior to that, at the beginning, we are going to have uh, uh, some songs uh, for you to listen to and to also to sing along and worship God. We want to be a, a service, even though all of us are not able to be here together. Uh, but uh, this is the uh, 21st century. Everything is online. I think maybe we got to get used to it and, you know, try to figure out how it's going to, to, to go along with that. So this is our uh, first go at having an online service. And uh, uh, here we go. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy Time 
has come Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God.
thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid, bearing all my sin and shame.
uh, we just want to make some announcement for this week and the week that is ahead, uh, folks, uh, that uh, everything is a bit of a topsy-turvy at the moment. We do not know what will happen uh, in the next couple of days. We are not very certain, uh, but we are planning as much as we can. Uh, so I just want to make the announcement uh, for the week that is coming. Uh, uh, we are going, we have cancelled all the meetings, as you understand. Uh, there's no meeting uh, that's going to be happening in the church. Uh, that's going to be a thing. The other thing is that, uh, that uh, if any one of you needs any kind of an assistance, uh, please feel free to call any of the leaders of the church or call at the number, our church number, and, and uh, we will get in touch with you. The third announcement is that on Tuesday we are going to have a, a prayer meeting, but uh, we are not going to meet together, but uh, I'm going to do some teaching and, and, and doing prayer. And, uh, you know, you can be in your homes and we can still be one in the spirit and we pray for some particular prayer uh, petitions. Uh, you know, we are living in very difficult times and... Uh, you know, it's our prayer that makes a difference. And I pray that uh, even though we are not able to come together as a church to pray, but uh, we are all united in the spirit. And as we pray, wherever we are, God will, will still hear us and uh, uh, God will still uh, continue to, to bless us. Amen. We will advise you uh, about whatever is going to happen uh, in the days that's to come. Uh, one other thing I just want to let you know is that we are looking at the possibility of maybe doing a service in Cotton Tree Park. Now, that is maybe because uh, we're just thinking about it and we do not know whether it will happen or not, but I'm just letting you know there could be a possibility if there's no lockdown, uh, we, may be, we might be doing a service in Cotton Tree Park. So just uh, prepare, be prepared for that uh, event eventuality. Amen? And, uh, but I just want to say to you too as well, uh, because it's a difficult time, uh, keep fellowshipping with one another, whether you meet at a coffee shop or you're going to WhatsApp or, or phone call, but you know, just, just keep the fellowship going. I, I think that's important in these days and times. Amen? And uh, when there's so much of fear out there. Uh, okay, that's for the announcement. And uh, I just uh, want to pray before we get into the message. And uh, uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Uh, Lord Jesus Christ, you're seated on the throne. Thank you, Lord, that you rule and reign. Thank you, my God. Uh, uh, nothing happens without your foreknowledge. And today, Lord, as we gather together as believers, Father, in the Spirit, Lord, I ask you, Lord, that you anoint the word of my lips, that the word of I speak may bring encouragement, edification, comfort, strength of God into the life of God's people. Father, we thank you, God, that uh, even with the coronavirus being around, Lord, uh, you got a plan and a purpose. And uh, therefore, Lord, we just commit this day into your hand. We just pray for your rich blessing to be upon each and every person of God. I pray, Lord, that you will keep them and guide them and direct them. I thank you, God, that you are with them, Lord. Even though they may be on their own in their church, in, in their own homes and sitting alone, Lord, but I thank you the presence of the Holy Ghost is there. And Lord, we commit this service into your blessed Lord, bless the word, and uh, we thank you, God, for your goodness and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, folks, uh, today I want to speak on the subject on uh, how to respond to a time such as this. And uh, the days we are living in is uh, what the Bible calls perilous days. Amen? It's a time when the Bible says man's heart will faint. And what is happening in the world today is, is unprecedented. And there's never ever had anything happen, at least in my lifetime, where so many nations are fearful and so many economies are, are, are being wrecked in a way, I could say that, and, uh, and uh, politicians do not know what to do, governments do not know what to do, and, uh, and there's a lot of fear and fear-mongering as well that's going on throughout the community, amen? And uh, every time you turn on the TV, all you hear is fear, amen? And, and, and the statistics and what's going wrong, and, uh, and we as a people of God, even though we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are bound. Offered, amen. We every time you look at the, the 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 TV, you know, you get worried. Amen. A fear comes into you, and and I want to say, if there are those of you out there and you are, you are fearful, in a sense, you know, it, it's, it's natural. It is natural because uh, we are bombarded and buffeted by bad news. Amen. Negative, uh, 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 evil report. If I were to say that, you know, like the children of Israel, you know, 
when they saw the giants and uh, the spies who brought, brought back the news, uh, the Bible calls it an evil report. But even though it was, there was some truth to that, that there were truly giants in the land, but still the Bible calls it an evil report because it did something to the people of faith, the children of Israel, amen, that caused them to turn back. Amen. And therefore, I want to first and foremost say to you that uh, uh, do not uh, let uh, fear rule our lives and uh, let us just look to, look to the Lord. Amen. And uh, let's uh, believe God uh, in, this, in this season. And uh, uh, there's so much of panic. Amen. P panic that is out there. And what has happened is uh, out of the blues. Amen. In a week's time, you know, the world has gone topsy-turvy. In weeks' time, you know, the whole uh, economy is being shaken and the sh uh, stock market, you know, is, is, is beginning to drop. Amen? And suddenly, this is the world suddenly, amen? There's some suddenly happening over which uh, uh, that we have got. And the scale and the proportion of this thing, amen? Not just it's, it's happening in one place, it's happening all over the world. And it is beginning to, to grow exponentially you know, uh, experientially, amen? And uh, so I want to say to you, uh, me too included, so I'm, you know, I'm no Superman, yeah, and uh, sometimes I got to really turn the TV off. I 10 minutes listen, to, and I want, to, I want to turn it off, amen? Uh, because all it puts is fear into our life. So there may be uh, people out there, and uh, brothers and sisters, if you are fearful, you know, uh, I, I want to say it's natural, amen? It's natural. But today we are not uh, going to look at uh, what the world says, amen? But we want to say what the word says, amen? We are people of faith, we are called of God, we are the children of the Almighty, we are sons and daughters of the living God, redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb of God. You know, we, we are not uh, to be fearful, you know, not, uh, and we need to hear not what the world says, or the media, but what the word says. Amen? What you meditate on will determine how you feel. Amen? Uh, will determine. Uh, if you look at what the world is saying, you'll be gripped by fear. You'll be, you, you, you'll be full of fear. Amen? And, uh, but if you hear what the word of God says, then you'll be strong and bold. And the Bible says, do exploits. Amen? So even in a season like this, it may be a season for exploits, a season that God wants to use you. Amen? That is an opportunity in every circumstances. Amen? And in every situation. And therefore, I just first and foremost, I, I want to say to you, uh, uh, be bold, be strong, you know, uh, and trust the Lord, uh, you know? And uh, so what we want to do today is that there are many things I'd like to talk about, but uh, uh, about what's happening in the world, but I, this Sunday, especially since I'm back from Malaysia, uh, I would uh, rather encourage you and speak some things from the Word of God and not even prophetically, uh, because our foundation is important. Amen? We need a strong foundation because all our foundations are being tested and tried. Amen? Uh, and uh, so we need to kind of secure our foundation because if our foundation is not strong, we are not going to navigate the day that is to come. Amen. Therefore, I want to talk about building strong foundations and, uh, and, and look into the Word of God. And something that the Word of God says that uh, I take it and anchor my faith in it, anchor my life in it. Amen. I want to anchor my life in the Word of God, not what the world have to say. Because like uh, uh, the, those who went out to spy the promised land, the Bible says, called it an evil report. It was true. But the Bible says it was an evil report. Amen? And so what's happening in the world is true. You can't say, no, it's not happening. It is true. Uh, you know, our, our numbers of people being affected are beginning to increase. Uh, some certain death are taking place. We know it, 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 it's growing in a big way. Uh, that is true. But the Bible still calls it an evil report because that is not what God says. Amen? God has got a plan. God has got a purpose. God uh, knew it was coming. God is prepared for it. And God has got answers to that. So do not let the evil report 
part of the uh, uh, carnivorous uh, virus in any way affect you. Amen. So therefore this uh, uh, morning we are going to look straight into the word of God. I'm going to bring you three points. And uh, if you build your foundation on these three points, uh, or these three truths, more than points, then you will be strong in your faith. Amen. Uh, secure your foundation. Amen. Inspect your foundation. And you know, we, we, even as believers, we've been believing for a long time and all that. But this season is testing our faith. If fear is gripping us, then in some, in an area, we are uh, something is wrong with our foundation. Not we are really faulty, but we're just being wobbly a little bit. Amen. And can I say that's normal? Uh, do not feel bad. Every man is being tested. Amen. Every person. So it's a normal thing. But today, I just want to go and uh, cover a couple of uh, uh, truth and some foundation. How to live in a time like this. Amen. How do you live as believers, as, as children of God? How do we live in a time like this? Though, uh, first thing I want to say is that, that uh, you know, this, the last week I've been in prayer and seeking the Lord and praying God what we do and things like that. And God speak to me about uh, uh, what's happening, uh, the, the virus, you know. And uh, Lord said, uh, and I hear, heard the Lord say to me this, and I think this is very important. This too shall pass. Amen? This too shall pass. And uh, therefore I really want to say to you, uh, what is happening in the world is a temporary thing. Amen? It is not an eternal thing. It's a temporary thing. Uh, we've got all kind of seasons. That, that seasons, all kind of seasons. It's a season where we are get, going through. Amen? Uh, yes, it's a pandemic. But uh, I felt the Lord say, this too shall pass. There shall be uh, some casualty. There shall be some deaths. There shall be people affected by it. But it will begin to pass. Amen? So do not focus on the thing that is passing. Amen? Do not be anchored, but be anchored in the word of God, and uh, uh, which never fails. Fails. Amen. Uh, and, uh, uh, and therefore we need to anchor our lives in the word of God that is permanent, that is eternal. Amen. Do not look at that which is passing. Uh, this pandemic is passing. Amen. Uh, I, I want to make some certain points here that uh, we are having a foretaste of the thing that is to come. This is not the thing. Amen. So just be prepared for that. This is just a foretaste. And then I believe that as I say, it's a foretaste. God is uh, shaking the church and is wanting to wake up the church to get it ready that is able to face the thing that is yet to come. Amen. This is a very, very small tremor compared to what's going to happen in the world. And I think it's a, a shake up and a wake up for the church. Now we have nothing to say about the people in the world because, well... The, the Bible says they're destined for whatever they, they have chosen. But we are chosen for salvation. Amen? And uh, this is a shake up and a wake up. And, and, and now, from now on, we've got to get serious. Amen? I, I believe like, uh, you know, in the, the story of the, 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 the wise virgin. Amen? Five wise virgin and five foolish virgin. Amen? We just need to prepare. And I believe uh, uh, the Lord Jesus is coming. But before the Lord Jesus come, a lot of other things are coming. Amen? Uh, things, trials and tribulations that I hate. And, and I believe that even this pandemic is to wake up the church for her eternal purpose and destiny. Amen? So do not be fearful. God is just waking us up. Amen? Waking up those who sleep in, in, uh, in, 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 in slumber in Zion. Wake up. Those who are living carelessly in Zion, wake up for the days that I hate are evil. Amen? And, and, and it is going to, the Bible says, uh, evil man will wax worse. Amen? The world will wax worse. But that is the world. But we are not of the world. We are of Christ. Amen? We've received a kingdom. We, we, we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but I'm just wanting to warning you, you know, and uh, this is not it. What is coming is it. Amen? But this is a wake up and a shake up. And I pray that each one of you, instead of being 
being fearful. If you are, I am too. Uh, let's not. Uh, all of us, when you look at the media, you nothing else but the fear. And uh, every day the, words, the numbers get bigger and bigger. It's normal. But in the midst of it, amen, let your faith shine. Let, your, let, let, let us begin to get a hold of God. And I encourage you to get a hold of God. Amen. So as I said that uh, the Lord spoke to me, he said, this too shall pass. So let us not focus on, on the pandemic that is passing. I don't know how long it's going to take, but it's going to come to an end. It's not going to be here forever and ever. It's, it's finished off, you know. Uh, even the pandemic in Wuhan, is, they, they say it's finished. Amen. People, the life is returning to normal. That's what they're saying, you know. And I believe it happened here. But uh, I, the Lord wants to get our attention, your attention. Amen. And I pray that uh, you'll use this as uh, the, this event, this incident, this period, as a time to kind of check your faith. Amen. Whether, whether you are in faith. Hallelujah, that's all. That, that's the most important lesson from this. Now, not the virus, but are we in faith? But and therefore, again, I want to say, do not look at that which is passing, which is a pandemic, it will pass. Amen? But look at the, wor the word of God that is eternal. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word, God's word, his word will not pass away. Amen? And let's look into the eternal thing. And as we look into the eternal thing, there are a couple of things that I want to bring to, to, to your attention. The, the first thing I would like to say to you today is, uh, uh, I, I believe this is a more, is the promise of God. In the midst of our circumstances, what we are going through, what is the word of God saying? And therefore, I would like to uh, look at that particular passage of scripture, uh, uh, yeah, uh, this particular verse, and you know, the, the whole, read the book of Psalms, chapter nine, 91, verse 1. Uh, I would like you to read it and uh, meditate on it. It's a great uh, uh, chapter to meditate on in a time like this. Amen? And here it says that, surely, I might want to shoot that, uh, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Amen? This is God's promise to you. Amen? Yes, there's a pandemic out there, and yes, it may be killing some people, and maybe thousands of people are being affected, and I think over a thousand people died in Italy, I think so. I don't know what, the, quite a huge number. Three thousand died in uh, Italy, but uh, and it's a bit fearful and all that, but uh, we do not look at that. We look to what God says, and the word of God says here that uh, he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and the, from the noise and, noise and pestilence. Amen? Our God is a deliverer. He promising you. Amen? And where are you going to put your faith on? You're going to faith on, put your faith on the media and the world, or are you going to put your faith in the word of God that never changes? Amen? An eternal God who backs up his promise, and he says he will do it. And he says that, yes, he says, this thing will be there. You know, so God did not say that, you know, it's all going to be nice and wonderful and beautiful. You know, he didn't say that. He said he'll, he'll have troubles, amen? Yes, he'll have troubles. And he said, surely there will be uh, uh, pestilence and uh, uh, problems, but I will deliver you, amen? Today you need to anchor your faith in what you look, what you meditate on, what you, you bind yourself to is the thing that will make you. Amen. And I really encourage you. This is a promise of God. And God is a deliverer. Amen. Even, even in, the, in the nation of uh, Israel, uh, when, when he took the children of Israel out, uh, the Bible says that uh, uh, when on the night of the, uh, the, 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 the angel of death came, it's a kind of a pestilence. Amen. Came and killed all the firstborn of the children of the Egyptians. But God. Amen. But God delivered the children of Israel. He did not come near their camp. Amen. A thousand fell for your right and ten thousand in your right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. And I want to say to you, you need to take these verses, especially Psalms 91. You need to meditate on it, read it, confess it, and say, Lord, I thank you. This is how I would pray. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your protection. I thank you, Lord. I'm in your presence. I thank you, Lord, that uh, you're a good God. I thank you. You've given me a promise, Lord. I thank you for the promise. And, uh, and, I, and I commit my life to you. Lord, I will not fear. I choose to believe. I choose to believe the word of God. I choose to live by faith. I choose to anchor my faith in the promise of God. 
Hallelujah. Not what the media say, not what the TV say, not what the politicians say, but you are the mighty deliverer. I thank you, God. Not only in India, if the Bible says it will not come near my dwelling. Amen. And, and, and a thousand and ten thousand may fall, but it shall not come nigh me. Hallelujah. That's what we need to choose to live by. So the first one, uh, I call that the promise of God. Honey, where's the one, the promise of God? Yeah, that's the promise of God. You know, so first thing, the promise of God. We need the promise of God. We need to anchor our faith in the promise of God because God is not a liar. God is not like man who says and not do it. But whatever he says, he will do it. Amen? Uh, and if he says that uh, he'll deliver you, he will deliver you. If it does not come nigh thy dwelling, then it will not come. And therefore our faith and confidence is not in the uh, Wuhan virus. Our faith and confidence is in the living God who gives a word and will keep that word. And he's given me, given you, and given all those who put their faith in the Son of the living God. He's given a promise and he's saying that he will deliver thee. And I choose to believe in him. Amen. Read the whole of Psalms 91. I uh, don't have time to read the whole of the chapter, but you read it, Psalms 91, and encourage yourself in the, in, in, in the promise of God. Amen. Whatever God promises, God fulfills if you believe. Hallelujah. Can I say that again? If you believe and anchor your faith, then God will perform it for you. That's why faith is very important. What you, will, what you believe in, it will come to pass. Amen? If you believe it, God will deliver you, he'll deliver you. Uh, if you don't, he won't. Your faith is important. And I ask you in these critical and difficult times that you'll set your faith and keep your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ and in the promise of God. Amen? Which God is able to deliver. Amen? He's mighty and able to deliver. Amen? And uh, that we may live safely and securely in the presence of God. So that's the first one. The second thing that I want to talk about uh, 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 today is uh, the, uh, the power of God. It's in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. Have a look at that. We are kept an eye on this, this, this. Listen. We are kept by the dunamis power of God. Unto faith, unto salvation. Hallelujah. There's a salvation. So there's a salvation that is yet to come. He will keep us until that salvation comes. What is that salvation? That salvation is when we are caught up with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That is the day of salvation. Or the day of salvation may be when you, when you die in Christ, in his will. And, and uh, until the day, in fact, it, I believe it speaks more about his coming. It talks about his rewards and he's, going, he's keeping you. You, my brothers and sisters, you are kept by the power of God. You do not keep yourself. Amen. You are not keeping yourself. You are kept by somebody else. The living God is kept keeping you. His power is around you. His anointing is in your life. He has sealed you for eternity. You are a child of God. And because He has sealed you and He's given you the Holy Spirit of promise, that power of the Holy Ghost is working mightily in you. Hallelujah. His power, His anointing, His presence, His power. And He said, it will keep you. Not only God's promise, but there is something working in you. Hallelujah. The, the dunamis power is working. For the Bible says, you shall receive power. And we have received power. And that power is keeping, is, is working on here. Just talking about the great power of God. There was a man called uh, John G. Lake. He lived in, in, in Africa, uh, in South Africa. And he did his ministry there. He was a, a Yankee, an American, who went there and ministered to that. And uh, they, I think it was Ebola virus. And uh, they would uh, bring Ebola virus to, and, and uh, what uh, is that, they, they, the, 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 there was a Petri dish that they looked at the Ebola virus and, they, and it was alive and kicking it as well. And what he does is that they, I think they put it on his hand and they put it in the hand and later they examined his hand at the virus, the virus was dead. Hallelujah. The virus, the Ebola, I believe, some deadly plague anyway. It was dead, it was gone. Why? 
He did not even listen to me. He did not pray. But once a virus came into contact with the presence and the power of God that was on John G. Lake, that virus shriveled up and died. Amen? Because there is a power in the man, uh, John G. Lake. I want to say to you, the same power that was in John G. Lake is in each and every one of us. That power is working whether you're aware of it or not. That as you pray in the Holy Ghost, as you pray in tongues, maybe I'll be sharing that at, an, at another time. Uh, there is a power that is released that is able to kill viruses. That is what it is. It's the same power that is in John G. Lake. No, no different. The same anointing that John G. Lake had, you and I have. Only thing maybe is that he had a greater measure. Amen? He had a greater measure, that's all. But it is the same thing, the same power, the same dunamis power. And I'm telling you that God is going to keep you here kept. That is something that is the power within you that God has endowed you with that allows you to resist the work of the enemy. It can kill viruses. It can keep, keep at bay the, the evil things. God has not only given you his promise. God has given you his power. Hallelujah. Bible says here, we are kept by the power of God. We are kept. I, listen to me. You don't keep yourself. He keeps you. Hallelujah. You don't keep yourself. None of us can keep ourselves. We are kept. Amen. We are kept by the almighty, kept by the powerful presence of God. The anointing of God is within us. And I want to really encourage you today that you look to the Lord. And, uh, and I really encourage you to pray. We'll cover some of that in the, in the prayer meeting. But I really encourage you to pray. Because one way that the power will manifest is as you begin to pray, you will increase the anointing level in your life. Amen. Uh, and uh, that will also be a buffer zone. We'll talk about all that at other meetings. But I just want to say, the power of God is over your life. God, you are kept by the power of God. This is very encouraging. Because we all, listen to me, a couple of things. We got to wash our hands. Hallelujah. You got to give, keep the distance. Uh, you got to do this. You got to do that. And, you know, and, and, in, a, in a sense, you know, we got to do what we got to do. Amen. But that doesn't keep us. Hallelujah. God keeps us. The living God, we are kept by the hand. And he is saying, I am keeping you. So those of you are fearful, can I just say to you, do not be fearful for your God keeps you. You are being kept by the power of God. And that's a wonderful thing. That's a, we can have so much confidence and security that God is keeping us. And, and there's nothing for us to worry about. Amen. He is able to keep us. Amen. And he says he keeps it, that we are kept by the power of God unto salvation. What is salvation? We are kept by the power of God according to his plan to finish the race. Hallelujah. Amen. That's his plan. Plan of salvation. Uh, Paul says, I run the race. Amen. I've completed the race. He'll keep you alive to fulfill his purpose. Only if you believe. Hallelujah. He's able to do it. But have faith. Have faith in the power of God. Have faith in the promise of God. These two things. Power of God, promise God. Have faith. And uh, because uh, uh, God has given us these things. Uh, so for, uh, and... and uh, so uh, those are the two things. And it's, a, it's like a shield. It's a fortress, a buckler. Hallelujah. Both the promise of God and the power of God. They are like a shield, the fortress, in a, which means it protects you. Amen. A fortress protects you. The enemy comes, but you're dwelling in the fortress. The Bible says, yeah, hidden in the pavilion. Hallelujah. Man, I'm telling you, you're also hidden. God has covered you. That's a, a zone around your life. A God zone. Amen. A present zone. A power zone. Hallelujah. The enemy comes in, the arrow hits it and it falls to the ground. Because he is keeping you. Hallelujah. You are kept by the power of God. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? We can take confidence in that. Otherwise you'll be worried. You know, you'll be sick worried. Amen. You'll always be checking, 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 you know. Yeah, listen to me. Trust God. He is your keeper. Amen? He is your keeper. And uh, so just uh, I want to say that with regard to that. So uh, the third thing I want to speak to you today is about, uh, this is from Psalms 121 verse 1. Can we have a look at that? It's the love of God. 
the Lord will watch over you coming and going now and forevermore. Uh, that Psalms 121 verse 8, that whole passage you'll find. Third thing is that uh, his power, his promise, but the eyes of the living God is over you. Amen? Sometimes we can't, we don't watch ourselves well enough. Amen? Sometimes we let things slip. But God, the Bible says, he's watching over you. He's because he loves you. That's the love of God. So I see the promises of God, uh, Jesus being the promise of God, the Holy Spirit being the power of God, and, uh, and uh, this promise watching over you being the love of God. God loves you. He wouldn't want any harm to come to you. Amen? No parents uh, would like their children to suffer. Amen? If they can save that child, if they can do anything, they'll do anything. Amen? If, if we earthly parents are so, uh, uh, that's how we feel towards the children, how about a heavenly father? The Bible says he watches over you. Amen? He keeps you. Amen? He protects you because he loves you. Amen? We are in the embrace of the Father. We belong to his family. I watch over my daughter Hannah. I, I love her and I watch over her. I would die rather than let anything happen to her. Amen? I'll put myself in harm's way to protect my daughter. I'll do anything. Amen? Now I'm just a mortal man and I'm an imperfect man and I'm you know, but uh, if, if I being an earthly father, I'm doing how much more our heavenly father. And the Bible says uh, he's gone to great, great trouble to adopt us into his family. Hallelujah. He sent his own son to suffer. If he did, did, will he not give you all other things? Amen. Hallelujah. He's adopted you. You are his tender care. Amen. His eyes are upon you because God loves you. The love of God. The love of God. God loves you. God loves you immensely. The love of God watches over you. Hallelujah. Because he loves you. He will not allow you to suffer, suffer anything. Amen. And we are in faith. Amen. If we are in faith, uh, God will, 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 will watch over us. And he is always watching. Uh, and uh, we, we just uh, learn to sometimes, you know, that thing is, uh, you got to rest in that. Amen. Rest in that. God, Daddy, thank you that you love me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Daddy, that you care about me. Thank you, Daddy, that, that you're watching over me. I trust you. I choose to trust in your tender care, in your loving care. I thank you that you're watching over me so that I may, may no plague me. So I, I, as, I, as, I, as, I, as I begin to conclude, I want to say to you, so the three things that we, 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 we can anchor, or oh, this is what faith your faith needs to be anchored somewhere. Amen. So the, your faith needs to be anchored in the word of God, which is a promise of God. Uh, your faith needs to be anchored in the power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. We are kept by the power of God. And your faith needs to be anchored in the love of God, that he loves you. He watches over you. That's that what gives me security in this difficult time, troubling times. Amen. Uh, listen to me. You know, this, uh, this coronavirus, it is, it, is, it is so prevalent. It's kind of everywhere. You don't even know where it is, who's got it. Amen. Uh, you can hear of cabinet ministers getting it. Amen. I, I, and, 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 and you hear of all kinds of people getting it. And, and, and they don't even realize they've got it until they've got it. And then it's a bit too late. Amen. It is kind of everywhere. And, and, and you, you know, you, you got to do what you got to do. Amen. Be, be, be smart, be wise, you know. But more than that, trust in Him. Look to Him. Amen? Seek His face. He loves you. Amen? He's got a plan for your life. He's got a future and a hope. Amen? He will not cause any plague to come nigh thy dwelling. A thousand may fall on your side and a ten thousand, uh, but it shall not come nigh. You know, I, I believe that, uh, that Psalms 91 is written for a time such as this. Hallelujah. It is written for, I mean, we in a thousand and ten, you know, we, we actually sing literally with our eyes and saying, and fear is filling up all in our heart, but let us look to God. He's a faithful God. Amen. He loves you and, uh, and he's got a plan and a purpose for your life. So I just want to say today as I, as I finish this message that uh, 
Uh, we are a people of hope. We got a good God. Amen. And, and he is for us. Amen. Our God is for, for us. Amen. And he is good. And he does only good. Amen. And uh, you are under his uh, supervision. You are under his care. Nothing evil will come nigh thee. Amen. You just need to trust and, and, and build yourself into the word of God and the promises of God. And he's saying, I, I'm going, I'm, I'm in control. Amen. Coronavirus is not in control. The Lord Jesus Christ is in control. Amen. Uh, whatever has happened, we may not understand everything about it, but uh, he is watching us. Amen. If you can keep the, the, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire without even uh, having singed. Amen. If he can do that in the fire turned up seven times, he is able to do that. That same God is able to do for you. You are no lesser than Shadrach, Meshach. You know, you just be faithful. Amen. And he will, he, he will do his job. Amen. Uh, it's going to be good. Amen. It's going to be good. Uh, and, but I, I just want to speak that word, the, these two shall pass. So, uh, you know, you, you need to know that this thing is going to pass. So don't, don't, Spend too much of time in it. It is there. Acknowledge it. But say it. This too shall pass. For God, this is not an eternal thing. Uh, but God loves you. God cares about you. God has got a plan for your life. We are living in exciting, frightening days, but exciting days. Amen. As I said at the beginning, it's a time, it's a wake up and a shake up for the church and the believer. I'm telling you, it's time for all of us to get ready. Amen. Get ready. This is a wake up. This is, a, uh, this is not the main dish. It's just the appetizer. Amen. And we are freaking out about the appetizer. We, don't, we, we do not know what we'll do with the main dish. Amen. When the, you know, we, might, we might just all faint. You know? But God, God is seated on the throne. And nothing is happening uh, outside the will of God. God is watching over it. And uh, as the enemy makes uh, headways, uh, does plans, God has got his own plan. I, and I just want to maybe quickly finish it. Uh, the Bible says this. When darkness and gross darkness fills the earth, and it looks like these other days. Amen? Amen? It looks like we are living in those days. That's a devil's plan. Fear is raging on throughout the whole planet. Amen? That's a devil's plan. The Bible says, the glory of the Lord shall arise. Hallelujah. Now, that's God's plan. Amen? So there are two plans. And in fact, God's plan begins to be activated when the devil's plan is actually happening. So the devil's plan is happening. Coronavirus everywhere. People are dying and everybody is fearful and, uh, you know, all that. But God's plan, in the midst of it, God has got a plan. Hallelujah. He's going to ambush the enemy. Amen. I believe there's going to be revival. I believe that people are going to be saved. I believe that people are going to bend their knees to the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe there's going to be whole communities that are going to be affected by the power of God, the glory of God, the anointing of God. Salvation is going to come to the young and the old. I believe even this coronavirus is a setup by the living God. He allowed the enemy to do what he's doing so that he may show the strength of his right arm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now the uh, coronavirus has invaded the earth and men are fearful. But I say to you, the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord shall arise and that too will invade the earth. Hallelujah. It shall cover the earth. Amen. And the glory, the light and the glory will put out all the darkness and, and the insanity and the, and, and, and the thing that is happening right now. Amen. God has got a plan. God has got a plan. His plan is sometimes let the, these things appear happen first. Amen. But uh, you, you are in God's plan. He's got a plan and a purpose for you. He loves you. He watches over you. He'll keep you. But he wants to use you. And you are part of God's plan. You are part of God's army. You are those who will rise up and shine in these days. For God shall anoint his church for for, for great and mighty. I believe the days of exploit are ahead. Hallelujah. Not little feebly little things. Exploit. We are all going to do exploits. Hallelujah. Amen. And when the glory comes, all of us are going to do exploit. And God has got a plan. So I choose not to look at the devil's plan. I hear the devil's plan. I see it in the media. But I'm saying the glory is coming. Hallelujah.
Now darkness has come. There's only one thing that is left to do. The glory has to come. Amen. And I believe that come. God will send it out at the right, at the right time. Things will happen. Therefore, just let us uh, look to the Lord. Trust the Lord. Uh, commit ourselves. Be in fellowship. Uh, if, if, if churches are able to be gathered together, come together. The Bible says do not forsake the assembling of the saints. Some of this thing is separating the assembling of the saints. Amen. Amen. Four meters square. Can you beat that? You, you, uh, Leah counted it. Maybe you can 15 people in this room, you know, working on that uh, thing, you know. But I want to say to you that uh, God has got a plan. Amen. Uh, let's uh, close our eyes in a word of prayer. Father, I pray, Lord God, today that, uh, Lord, I speak faith, Lord. I speak faith. And uh, I declare faith that by faith, my God, as we look to you, as we trust in you, as we, as, as we anchor our faith in you, Lord, I thank you, God, that you're going to anoint us, Father God. Anoint us with answers. You anoint us with breakthrough. Anoint us with blessing. Father, I thank you, God, for provision. We thank you, God, for healing. We thank you, Lord, for blessing. We thank you, Lord, for breakthrough. I thank you, Lord, you're going to break through in the midst of it. Father, I thank you, God, that you're going to share the strength of your right time. And I pray, Father, each and every person who's sitting under the preaching of my word, Lord, I pray and I speak a blessing into the love. I come against uh, this infirmity, this disease, this curse called coronavirus. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I bind you in the name of the, the Lord Jesus God. We declare and speak to you. Be gone in Jesus' name. We bind you up. We declare that the love of God, the power of God, and the word of God is exalted about your name. And Father, we thank you, my God. I pray, Lord, for those who may be affected in any way. Father, we speak healing. We speak restoration. We speak faith into their lives. Father, I thank you, God, that their faith be strengthened, Father. I pray that their faith be strengthened in this day and this hour, that they are able to rise up, Father, that they are anchored, and Lord, that they are rooted in you, Lord. I commit each and every person in, in, in Coastal Life Church and, and those who may be listening by, by, by uh, uh, YouTube, Lord, I just pray, my God, uh, that you will strengthen them in this time. Bless them in this time, Father. Give them answers, Father God. Therefore, Lord, we commit this time to you and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, for your love, for your power, for your promise. God, we get so many things given to us, Lord. And we can stand in this trial and not be shaken. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to speak, to, uh, just want to, you know, we want to take communion and... Uh, I'm going to pray over the communion. If there's, those of you are prepared to take communion, ready, God, yeah, communion ready, you know. We're just going to thank God and, and, and look to God today that uh, because there's healing in the communion. Hallelujah. There's blessing. It's called the cup of blessing. Amen. A cup of blessing. And uh, uh, we just, uh, if you got your communion, you know, this is the time for you to partake. And uh, I'm just going to pray and thank God. Uh, uh, Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. That Jesus became a curse that we may be blessed. Lord, that every curse that was upon the world was placed on your son, Jesus Christ. Every plague that was on the earth was placed upon your son. Lord, uh, the 33 core disease, 39 core diseases of the world, Lord, you placed it on your son, the Lord Jesus, that we may not partake of those things father that we may partake of the blessing today father i just pray as we as we partake of the bread and of the wine lord i just pray for strength i pray for healing i pray for blessing father i thank you god that uh, if anybody has got fear lord you'll dispel and break that spirit of fear of them lord that they be strengthened in faith lord to believe in the promises of god we thank you for your goodness we thank you for your mercy and thank you for your grace we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's eat and drink. Thank you, Lord. Father, we commit the congregation into your hand. Keep them, Lord. They need you. Some of them will not be able to fellowship for a whole lot of different reasons. But Father, I just pray the keeping power. I just want to pray the keeping power. As you said, we are kept by our power. I pray, Lord, keep them. Bless each and every one of them. Commit each and every 
Remember each, every person, every believer, every son of God, daughter of God in the end. We thank you, Lord, that we will hear good reports from you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Uh, service is over now, and I uh, uh, just want to, as I, as I finish, I want to encourage you that uh, be in fellowship and, uh, uh, you know, uh, keep in touch uh, with one another, and uh, we will let you know other things are happening during the week. You know, we'll make the announcement uh, through Facebook and, and, and SMSs and all that. Uh, we live in a wonderful time. Hallelujah. Amen. We live in a wonderful time. Our faith is being tested and tried, but God is seated on the throne. And the Bible says we shall overcome because Jesus said, I have overcome the world. Amen. Uh, some overcoming to do, and so we shall. God bless you, and we'll see you again next week. Bless you.